What's up, divas and divos? So it's your girl April. I'm back. Okay. Um, last week I know I didn't do a real talk because I was just like basically out of it. You know what I'm saying? I was I was overworked. I was tired. You know, I was just I needed uh, I just needed a serious break. Like seriously. Um, so I took off from doing any videos. I'm trying to make this a little bit darker for you guys. Um, and just relax. Like, you know, I mean, I didn't relax like that, but I relaxed somewhat. It is very bright in here, like, seriously. Very bright in here. So I, you know, I basically sat and watched TV for some time. You know, um, I can't watch but so much television. But I did stop and watch some TV, caught up on some shows, um, watched z nation which is like a parody or somewhat a parody of the walking dead then i rewatched the walking dead again you know what i mean like that's my favorite show and i just made some wigs for my website and shit like that you know i just really needed to just chill and stuff so i didn't record anything but i did miss you guys and i felt really bad about not posting any videos or especially for real talk like you know because i know a lot of you guys look forward to that but I just had to take a break for me. Now, by the time you guys see this, um, I will be hmm, on my way to the airport because I'm going to New York for two weeks to visit with my mom and then to visit with my husband or you guys, you know, my ex-husband, soon-to-be husband again because we are engaged. Um, and also to visit with my son and my daughter-in-law and my grandson because they're having their baby shower on the 20th so you know i will be doing that um and just chilling so i will have a real talk out for you guys next week as well but i just really needed to take a break and so i decided when i come back i would just you know do my makeup and i do know like you know what i'm saying look at my eyebrows like my eyebrows have grown in so much like seriously and I really don't want to tweeze them because I don't really like to walk outside without any eyebrows you know like super thin especially when I don't want to do my makeup so yeah my edges are growing back you know what though I stopped using um well I didn't stop using it but I didn't have any more and normally I can only find this on Amazon so it helped a little bit but not as much so I, I started using this, which is by Mark Anthony, 100% coconut oil plus extra virgin hair and body, um, you know, cream or whatever you call it. restores and softens hair and skin. So I've been using this, which works really good. Okay. Now, when I say it works really good, meaning, um, my hair st seems like it stays dry. Like I can't put grease in it because it weighs it down. So I use like, um, I'll use like Moroccan oil or some type of lotion sometimes, you know what I mean? And it'll stay moist for like a day. And then by the time I take my braids out, like a week later, they're really dry. So I've been using this and it's actually been working. Like it's been keeping my hair so moist and no breakage. Also, um, the edges are staying moist, which is what I needed. So, and it's not all oily and it doesn't weigh it down. So I really do like this. When I got it in the mail, it was runny. I, I guess it's because, you know, the heat out here and just traveling. But it does, it does thicken up. You know what I'm saying? It does thicken up. So it's not like runny. And, um, yeah, I do actually really, really do like this. Um, this is like some really good stuff. Normally when I use coconut oil, it just kind of like breaks me out because I'm allergic to coconuts. But this did not. And I like it because it eliminates frizz and seals, split ends, and breakage. Style as desired. So you can use this on your body too. But I don't use it on my body. I just use it on my hair because I have enough products for my body. And plus, I want this to last me long enough because I hate having to go out and get stuff. But this actually does work. And funny thing, when I got it in the mail, I had got like a bunch of other products two um which was like from mark anthony um because i'm on their pr list and i had said to myself hmm, let me see how this really works and i actually do like it the other products i haven't used yet but this i really do like a lot so yeah so you guys um so i decided to do real talk in here you guys remember this right you guys remember this hair gel this brown hair gel okay so got this from the dollar tree the dollar tree has a whole bunch of nice new stuff 
Um, I'm not sure about everybody's Dollar Tree, but I do know that mine has a bunch of stuff, um, like a lot of nice black hair care products. So me and Mumsy, we did a video yesterday, which was Monday because they're off for um, fall break here. So we did do a video um, for the Dollar Tree, which was great. And I'll have that posted up later this week, hopefully. Um, and what else? That's about it, basically. Um, I haven't really been up to much of nothing. Just been trying to work, like, you know, on my website, on, on wigs. And majority of them on my website are just the wigs that I made. Like, I'm, I made, like, a whole bunch of brand new ones, um, like, last week. And I posted those up for sale and they sold out. Then I made some more for this week and those posted up. And I do have a few of those left. So you guys can check them out if you're interested. And the lashes that I have on today, funny thing, um, why is this one piece at the end like not wanting to cooperate with me? Like it's going to drive me crazy. There we go. So I got these on because Walgreens had a sale like I can't remember it was like buy two get the third free and you can mix and match the cosmetics so I got the Ardell's and these are Ardell's that I have on I just can't remember the number because they're different from these just like a little bit or you know what these are not even Ardell's these are Kiss I think that I have on but these are Ardell's and I like those and then these I got from this beauty supply store called Grand Mart out here. I have yet to try these, but these are cute. But these, they're they're nice, but they're definitely not my favorite. You guys know my favorites are the Barbie lashes, um, which I absolutely love. Absolutely love them to death. Um, which is by Velvet59. They're $15 a pair. Um, but they're vegan, vegan lashes, right? They're vegan lashes. Come on, camera focus. Focus. They're vegan lashes, so you know, but they look like they're mink. And they'll last like you know I put on individuals I just finished doing my lashes um, I'll put on individuals and then I will put on like strips because I just feel like it gives me like a better look like the camera is doing right now um, and stuff so yeah I normally wear these um, lashes and these are like my faves these are definitely my faves so Definitely. So I, I have one pair left, so I'm going to save them for New York. You know what I'm saying? But I just decided, you know, take a break and stuff and chill out for the week. So you guys, we're going to get right into this real talk because I don't want to make it too long. And while my face is drying, um, in case you guys wonder what I sprayed on my face, this is by Bath & Body Works. And this is their Pure pure Simplicity Rose Water Face & Body Freshener. So I bought this last um, semi-annual sale. I think it was like during the Christmas sale it was. And I bought like a whole mess load of them because they were like $3. And I love them because they do refresh your face. They do make your face feel really, really good. So I do spray it on my face after, um, you know what I'm saying, I um, cleanse my face. So I just used some witch hazel on my face prior to that, which you see me wiping it off with the pad. And now I'm just like taking that off. Not even taking it off, but basically just like refreshing it. Because I really don't want the um, witch hazel like on my face like that, like that. And I apologize if it's so bright in here. Um, that's because I have the window open and stuff. But we're going to get into this real talk. So you guys know if you have a real talk that you need me to talk about and such, you want to spill the gossip and the tea, you can go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. If you'd like to change the names of the people in your email, meaning yourself or whoever you mentioned it, you can go ahead and let me know that you did so. But 99.9% .9 of the time, if you do not tell me you changed names, I will best basically change them myself. You know what I'm saying? Like 99.9% .9 of the time, I will basically change them myself. Okay? Yes. Baby daddies. So, you guys, let's get into this room. So this email has like two parts to it because she sent me one on the 9th of September and then on the October the 8th. So let me just read the first one. 
Hey April, I love your real talk videos and can't believe I'm even writing you, but I need your advice. This is going to be long, so I apologize in advance. You can call me Tony. I'm in my mid-20s and I'm a flight attendant. As you can imagine, my job is pretty exciting and the best part is I travel for free. Here's my situation. One day at work, I met this guy who's a pilot. I told myself that I would never t talk to a pilot, but it was something about this guy. One night, we had a long layover and decided to hang out. Come to find out we have so much in common, we're the same age, from the same city, and actually have mutual friends. He also mentioned that he has two kids and is divorced. I usually wouldn't go for someone like that, but we were just hanging out and getting to know one another. Nothing more. So I thought, so, so at least I thought. We had sex that night and I woke up to him getting me breakfast that morning. That was almost three months ago and, we're, and we've been inseparable ever since. We talk every day. He calls me gorgeous as if that was my real name, compliments me, is affectionate, caring, and is a listening ear if I need one. He, if he's working and I'm off, he will invite me to come to his layovers and I usually do. Whenever I come, it's always a good time. He takes me out for dinner and drinks and gives me a massage, dicks me down, then we cuddle until we fall asleep. He lives about 30 minutes away and always comes to see me. Sounds perfect, right? Wrong. A few weeks ago, he told me that he's in an on and off again relationship. When we first met, they were off, but now they're on again. He says they have their problems like any other relationship, but she takes care of his kids when he's away at work. And to me, it sounds like that's the only reason he's keeping her around. He's a single dad and has someone to watch his kids when he's at work. I get it. He said he's content with the situation because he doesn't have to pay for a nanny. And I don't blame him. Either way, that's still his girlfriend. When we're together, he'll put his phone on airplane mode. And we're leaving. And when we're leaving, he deletes my text. So she knows who I am. I left my wallet in his car and she went through it and saw my driver's license. But they're still together. She's been threatening to leave him and move back to Texas even before she found out about me but has yet to do so. I low-key feel like the side chick and I don't like it but at the same time he treats me better than any man I've been with. He pays for everything, calls or texts me every day, tells me he misses me. He even told me I can have just about anything I want from him. We're so compatible it's crazy. I just don't understand why he gives me so much attention and treats me so good. I feel like nobody is faithful these days and I should just enjoy it for what it is but at the same time I'm not stupid and I know better than to settle for a man with a girlfriend. Everything is perfect when we're together, but when it's time to part ways, I can't help but get in my feelings because he's going home to her. Let's take today, for example. We just got back from his layover and we landed. He told me that he couldn't take me home. I asked him why and he said because he's getting picked up and I asked by who, but he kept trying to change the subject. I knew it was his girlfriend. I even saw him texting her. I just wanted him to say it. After he told me that, it got awkward and my whole mood changed and he could tell. I hate feeling this way. I don't know if he's not happy or feels stuck in this relationship or his current relationship or what. He even mentioned that he blocked my number when she came back into the picture, but decided to unblock me because he likes me so much. What should I do? Thanks in advance for your advice. So that was the first email, okay? Now to the second one. Okay. So update. So after that day at the airport, we finally, we didn't talk for two weeks until he finally texted me. He said he missed me and didn't like the energy. I guess you can say we made up. A few days later, he called me and asked if he could come over. I agreed. He came around 10 p.m., which is unlike him because he's usually home with his children. What made it even more weird was that he spent the night, which he never does. I knew something had to happen between them if he's spending the night. Long story short, he went home the next morning and called to tell me that she went home. She packed all her shit and left and didn't stop, and he didn't stop her. She's been gone. Our relationship and friendship has grown. Everything was perfect until I found out that she's coming back to help with the kids. He made it clear that he doesn't want to do it, but he has no choice. He needs the help. Of course, I got my feelings and we had a long, honest talk. During that talk, he made it clear that he wants to be in a committed relationship with me, which sounds good, but at the same time, it doesn't because she's coming back to live with him, sleep in his bed, and help him. April, I'm so confused. I know I should be running for the hills, but there's no doubt in my mind that he cares about me and wants to be with me. He's just in a fucked up situation. Don't get it twisted. I'm still doing me on the side, but I have feelings for him more than anyone else. What do you think I should do? So, let's see. What did she call her? I think she said her name was Tina. Okay. Tony. So, she named herself Tony. So, first of all, okay. Now, y'all know she is a, um, she is a stewardess. Um, I think that's what she called her. She's a flight attendant. So, they don't, I don't know if they call themselves stewardess anymore or not, but she's a flight attendant and he's a pilot. So, you know, they met during a layover. She said she would never talk to a pilot. I'm not really sure why she, 
would never talk to a pilot. I mean, like, the movies that I've seen with pilots, like, um, damn, what is that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio? And he was a pilot, and he just was, like, a pilot in the movie, but he, he really wasn't a pilot. Like, he was faking jacks, you know what I'm saying? He was faking moves, so he really wasn't a pilot. But basically, most of the movies that I've ever seen that have to do anything with being a pilot, like, not most of them, but, like, some of them, a majority of them, um, a majority of them seem like the pilots just, you know, they do their thing, meaning, you know, they sleep around, whatever, whatever, you know, basically like that gigolo type of lifestyle, okay? So, that's probably the reason why she doesn't want to um, talk to any type of pilots because of just the lifestyle that they live. And I get it, you know what I'm saying? Um, and probably also because, you know, when she's off, he's probably at work. So it's probably like a hard situation to deal with, with spending time and such. But it seems like she doesn't have that issue because she's going to his layovers. Now, I'm not really sure how far apart his, his layovers are. Like, meaning, like, far apart from her home. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's not guaranteed that he's going to always be in her area. But, you know what I mean? Um, I do. I got this from Dollar Tree. This is our Ardell building fibers y'all but i do know that it's not like a guarantee that she's going to be in his state or city at every layover and maybe he like tells her in advance or whatever and she travels to see him which is you know can be pretty kind of like hard to digest like i don't know about y'all but i mean i guess i would do it because i travel back and forth to, to new york until my husband um comes home at the end of february but you know that relationship is kind of fresh between them so i don't know if i would just like you know i guess you know i guess it all depends on how you feel about the person and if you feel like that chemistry is there what she does somewhat so you know you guys know the kicker to the story already he's a pilot he's a single dad who knows where his baby mother is at but he's a single dad and he has he told her afterwards. He didn't tell her the day he met her, or you know, what I'm saying when they was when they were both like, oh, we got so much in common, and we know friends, and we lived in the same city, and all of this. He didn't tell her none of that stuff. Um, that he had an on and off again relationship, and that his girlfriend lives with him and takes care of his kids. He didn't tell her that in the beginning, but he sure did tell her some information about him, but not enough to my liking. Like you know, what I'm saying he didn't like divulge all the information. Like yeah. You know, I um, I got a girl, and you know, she, we she lived with me, and she take care of my two kids, and you know, I'm I'm only basically using her because I don't want to pay for a nanny, et cetera, et cetera. But Tony is like, she get it. She would probably take advantage of the situation too because she said, you know, she gets it, and she would probably do it too. Like basically, that was her words. Um, now here's my thing. Y'all on and off again, meaning we're going to call him Randall because I don't know his name. So the pilot Randall has a girlfriend and she lives at home, at his home with her, okay, with him. And she takes care of his two kids while he's in the air flying, you know what I'm saying? So this is my eyebrow gel. Um, so she takes care of his two kids while he's, you know, working. Now, it's one thing. To be in a relationship you have somebody like that's that's doing that for you but when you are trying to like establish a relationship with somebody else i don't think like that's cool like either way i don't think like none of it is cool because for one and i'm just going to try to zoom in a little bit you guys i just don't think it's cool because blatantly he just told her like he uses the the, the girlfriend the on and off again girlfriend that's in my eyes, that's basically what he said. I basically use her to watch my kids so I don't have to pay for a nanny. You know what I mean? And I don't have to worry about daycare or anybody taking care of them. Basically, I'm using her so that way I don't have to pay anybody. Which to me is like, okay, so if you're using this woman for that, who's to say you're, on, you're not, you're not going to use me for the same thing or something else? Like, when you first get wind of a man... And he's telling you basically he's doing something and he's and it's basically blatantly like I'm using someone or another woman. What makes you feel like you excluded from the whole situation? What makes you feel like he's not going to try to use you? So he sits there and tells you all of this cool stuff like, you know, he likes you a lot. He takes you out. He buys you dinner, etc., etc. You ever stop to think like maybe he's telling you all of this stuff because his relationship with the girl that he's with now is not that great and now he needs to find himself another living nanny you know what i'm saying 
sweep you off your feet, talk all that good shit to you, to where you to the point where you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna work no more. You're just gonna stay at his house and watch his kids. You know, me personally, if I found out that somebody had a girlfriend, I wouldn't even mess with them no more. Like seriously, I wouldn't want to mess with them because what makes you excluded? Like what makes you feel so like you are so special that he can't do it to you? Okay. And if he's he's a grown man and he's a pilot, so it ain't like he broke or nothing. He got money. They not they don't make minimum wage. Pilots do not make minimum wage. They make pretty decent, damn good money. So he can afford to get his kids a nanny. Those are his children. Those are his responsibilities. And he definitely can afford to get himself a nanny. Okay. So now you being cheap and you using women. Like who does that? And from just hearing just that part right there, like, oh, he just uses the woman, that's fucked up, okay? That part is fucked up, okay? You're a grown-ass man. He make enough. He can get himself a living nanny. He can get somebody to take care of his kids while he's away on work. That's just how I'm feeling. And that right there is like a red flag to me. I definitely would be running for the hills if I was to find out that, oh, okay, the guy that I'm messing with, for one, has a live-in girlfriend who sleeps with him in his bed when he comes home from work. And you can't tell me that, oh, I don't, you don't have sex with her. You don't have any type of relationship with her. You can't convince me any of that because for one, like I said, she's a living girlfriend. She lives there. She takes care of your kids while you're away. Don't you think she's going to expect something in return, some type of commitment from you, some type of relationship from you, you know? And then once you find out that this is going on, why would you continuously stay in the picture? Like, okay, that's great. He treats you good. He pulls your chair out. He takes you to dinner. He pays for shit. You know what I'm saying? He gives you a massage. You know what I'm saying? He compliments you. That's what a man is supposed to do. He ain't doing nothing out of the ordinary. So I don't really think like he gets kudos to that, for one. And in the same breath, you got him telling you all of this shit about... You, you telling me all of this shit about what he does for you. So what do you think he does for the girlfriend that lives at his home? Okay? What do you think he does for the girlfriend that lives at his home? He probably do more for her because she's the one that's living there and taking care of his kids. And you can't tell me that he doesn't because how do you even know for a fact? So that right there is like a red flag. I mean, like, listen, I understand everybody want to be in a relationship and everybody want to have some somebody but okay so where was i because i totally forgot so basically it just all boils down to this um you got somebody you met him okay he takes care of you he he doesn't take care of you literally but he does nice things for you isn't that what a relationship is all about i mean like that's what you're supposed to do in a relationship when you're with somebody or you like somebody you're supposed to treat them with respect and treat them like you care about them i don't even know why this freaking thing just keeps doing this oh my god you're supposed to treat them with respect, you know what I'm saying? You're supposed to care for them. You're supposed to pull their chair out. You're supposed to compliment them. That's what you do in a relationship. So the shit that he's doing for you is nothing new, sweetheart. And I guarantee you that he's not going home to that girl and treating her like a bag of potatoes because she would have been long gone, okay? So number one, I would never mess with nobody else's man because that right there is just like a desperation move. That's just one thing you don't do. Girl code, whatever code, just have your own code and get your own fucking man. Eventually, you'll find somebody, Tony, that's right for you. But, so, basically, they 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 parted ways for like two weeks. They didn't speak because, you know, she got in her feelings about him getting picked up at the airport by his girlfriend, his living girlfriend. You can't get in your feelings about the shit when you just fucking said that. When y'all are together, he puts his phone on airplane mode. And when y'all separate from each other part ways, he deletes all your text messages. So, you can't get mad. You already knew he had a girlfriend that lived there. How are you getting mad? You you cannot get mad. Okay, get, I, yeah, you could probably feel some type of way. But you really can't get in your feelings about it because you know why? You set yourself up for that shit. Once you found out the nigga had a girlfriend... Bitch, you should have fucking just dumped his ass. Like, but on top of that, once you found out the nigga uses bitches, uses his girlfriend to take care of his kids, 
that goes right there to say a lot about a person when they let you know that they use some motherfucking body okay that right there means to me like well shit you might be using me right now at this very moment okay i guarantee you tony he's using you might not be to watch his motherfucking kids his little rugrats but I guarantee you, he's using you for something. Whether it be your company, your time, your cootie cat, your kitty cat, or whatever. He using you for something. For them long layovers. You know what I'm saying? Because his baby, his baby mama, his girlfriend ain't traveling to his layovers. He ain't inviting her. Of course not. He gotta, she gotta stay home and watch the kids. So, you are being used for something as well. And, okay, when somebody is using you and they want to get something from you, they want to get in good with you. Uh, they are really nice to you. Why would you be mean and nasty to somebody that you're trying to gain from? Regardless of what the fuck it is you're trying to gain, whether it be a couple of extra dollars, some clothes, some hair bundles, um, some pussy. You you trying you got a you got a fucking agenda, and your whole agenda is to get something from that person. So his whole agenda is to get what a nanny, a living free nanny that gives pussy while he's away and takes care of his kids that's what he's gaining and as long as he continues to put the pipe down on her and treat her like she's supposed to be treated then he's definitely going to just continue to you know what i'm saying treat her well why does somebody always call when i'm doing something i hate when that happens like whenever i'm not doing something nobody wants to fucking call me but when i am doing something Everybody wants to bother me. You know what I'm saying? Text me, call me, whatever. So, yeah, like I was saying, and I don't even remember what the fuck I was saying, but when you gain, when you're trying to gain something from somebody, basically, you're trying to win them over. You're trying to get in good with them. You're trying to put your best foot forward. You're trying to let them see, like, hey, we good friends, or hey, I like you, or whatever it is, you're not going to show your real true side. Because if you fucking true, show your true side, why the fuck would that person that you're trying to gain something from fuck with you, okay? They're definitely not going to fuck with you. So, in return, what do you do? You'll be a gentleman. You'll be nice. You'll say sweet things, sweet nothings in, the, in my ear or whoever's fucking ear. You know what I mean? You'll do what is needed to get what the fuck you want. So here it is. He's got this girl that lives with him. And she is the living nanny. Okay? She is the nanny with benefits. Or the girlfriend with benefits, rather. Okay? Because that's what the hell she is. She's giving up the cooch. He's giving up the D. Okay? And she's taking care of his kids. Do she have a job? I wonder, does the live-at-home girlfriend have a job? This is what I'm wondering because, you know, we don't know how old the kids are. Come on, eyebrows. Come through. But, like I fucking said, if you find out that someone is using another person just to get type some type of gain, sweetheart, don't feel like you too good and you not about to be the one, the next victim, okay? Mm -mm. Honey, you a victim right now. So, basically what happened was, she got in her feelings because, you know, his girlfriend, his girlfriend, girlfriend was coming to pick him up from the airport. From the airport. Tony got in her feelings about the shit. Like I said, you can't get mad. You really can't get mad because, for one, you already knew about that girl. You already knew. You already knew what time it was. You already knew she lived there. You already knew she was sleeping up in that bed. You already knew she was taking care of them kids like they was one big happy family. You already fucking knew that he was dicking her down. And then he come around and dick you down too. Sweetheart, let me tell you something. That's where you playing games with yourself. Because for one, if he's sticking his dick in her and he's sticking his mouth or wherever it, it belong or don't belong, whatever y'all want to call it. Um, then he gonna come back to you and kiss all up on you and tell you all of these sweet nothings. How can you really like someone and you expect them to go along with the program, that type of program? Like, I'm sorry, but where do we do this at? Okay. Now it was one, it was one incident. You made a mistake. You fucked them the, the day you met him. Okay. That's, 
that's your business because you're grown. You could do that. However, once you found out about the situation, that's when I would have just been like, you know something? You're a nice guy. You seem like you're a nice guy, you know, but your situation isn't for me. So y'all stop speaking to each other for two weeks because of, you know, you got in your feelings, Tony. And now here it is. Y'all started speaking again because what? He came over to your house. Came to spend the night at your house, which is something he don't never do because, of course, he'd be at home with his kids and who else? His girlfriend, okay? And he came over at 10 o'clock, which is unnormal, and he came over to spend the motherfucking night. In the morning time, he goes home and he tells you she packed her shit and left, went back home. Now home, I'm not sure if that's Texas, Texas, or does she have her own place out there, which is probably not the case. She probably went back home to Texas, and you know what happened? Who was watching his motherfucking kids while she was gone? Nobody. So, or whoever. He had to pay somebody. So, what happened? He said, oh, but she's coming back. This was like for two weeks, she's coming back. But he didn't really want her to, but, you know, he needed her to. Sweetheart, he's the one who probably was texting her, calling her, trying to get her to come the fuck back the whole entire time because you not watching his fucking kids. I am really not happy with my eyebrows right now. Like seriously, I'm really, really not. Why is this stuff like seeming like it's drying up? You not watching his fucking kids. So yeah, he had to get back in good with her because for one, you can't just meet somebody and expect them to fucking be your living nanny off the rip just like that. You know what I'm saying? He met you. He's just started fucking with you. He can't expect you to watch his kids or any other female that he just met. So what does he do? He gets back in good with old girl that he been had as a living girlfriend slash, slash stepmother to his kids. And he tells her everything's good. He love her, etc., etc. You know what I'm saying? And she comes back. But here you are, Tony. I really don't like my eyebrows. Here you are, Tony. You feel like you're caught in a situation. Sweetheart, let me tell you something. The only situation you're caught in is your own feelings, okay? Seriously. It's your own fucking feelings. Like, straight up. Like, get it together, sweetheart. Why would you want somebody else's man? Me, personally, I wouldn't want nobody else's fucking man. I don't want nobody else's dick. I don't need nobody else's lips or none of that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? However, like I said... There are desperate times, calls for desperate measures, and that's what it seems like when you're fucking with somebody else's man, and you know he got a girl, and he lived with her, and then on top of that, he's, he got her taking care of his kids, and he done told you that, you know, oh, well, I'm only basically using the bitch to take care of my fucking kids while I'm working, you know, other than that, because I don't want to pay for a nanny, because I'm a cheap motherfucking bastard who's just real cheap and uses women for whatever I can get out of them. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be a car, a ride, some pussy, a free dinner, watch my kids. You know what I'm saying? I'm going I'm to get what the fuck I can get. And that's what the fuck he's doing. Okay. So, you going right along with the program, sweetheart. He got you wrapped around his fingers. So what? A nigga tell you that you cute. You beautiful. You gorgeous. You know what I'm saying? So what? He tell you all of that. He compliments you. What the fuck you think he gonna tell you? You ugly bitch. You fat. You ugly. You ain't my type. But, you know, let's, let's get, let me get some. Who the fuck gonna tell somebody that who, who really need to use them or want to get with them for certain purposes, certain purposes? Like, come on. Let's, let's be realistic here, sweetheart. Let's think realistically. Let's think rational. The motherfucker only wants you for his side chick. And then on top of that, you telling me you feel like the shot side chick. Sweetheart, you are the motherfucking side chick, okay? You are the motherfucking side chick. The nigga deletes your text messages as soon as y'all part ways, okay? All right? On top of that, he got a bitch. He got a girlfriend that lives with him. She don't even have her own apartment. She lives with him. They are a family, okay? Like my grandson says, family. That's how he say it. They are a family, okay? And that's what it is. His kids like her because if they didn't, she wouldn't be there. And I'm pretty sure he would find another female to get with the program and watch his motherfucking rugrats, okay? So, my dear... You are the side chick, and what you need to do is get it together. You're talking about, there. You, you don't know if you find a man or like that or whatever the fuck you said. Sweetheart, here's the issue, all right? When you be so enwrapped into some shit that you really don't supposed to be enwrapped in, like me in this relationship right here, you don't give other people a chance. But then, then again, you did say you have your side pieces and you got 
niggas on the side. So here's my thing. Why even have all these other people or another person on the side when you could just, you know, give that one person who you got on the side your full undivided attention and get to know him and allow him to treat you just as such? Because obviously the, the, the person who you got on the side, he don't treat you like shit because had he treated you like shit, you wouldn't fuck with him on the side regardless. Now, you got somebody as your main motherfucker. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. That motherfucking pilot, Randolph, that nigga would be ghost. Like, I'd be ghost. I, I'd dub him so fucking fast, he wouldn't know if a fucking jet plane hit him or a motherfucking hot air balloon. Because that nigga is full of hot fucking air, okay? And then he just uses his status of being who he is, a pilot, because I do know that they feel like they are on top of the world because they fly motherfucking planes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, so you fly a plane. Motherfucker, you don't take care of the country. You ain't going out there fighting the wars. You are just a motherfucking pilot. That's your job. Let's get it. Let's get it straight. That's your job. You signed up for that. You know what I'm saying? You went to school for that. They didn't just randomly pick you because you're so fucking special. So, sweetheart, let me tell you something. Your world and his world are two different things. He has a family, okay? He got two kids and he got a family with you know, his girlfriend. That may not be her kids, but they a family. They are definitely a motherfucking family together, believe it or not. When you're not around, he's cuddled up with her. He's giving her undivided attention. He's texting her. He's calling her. You know he's calling her because he's checking on his fucking kids. And, of course, he's going to give her conversation at all. This is the part that I really, you know what I'm saying? Listen, I understand that we all may get in a relationship with somebody. And we may not know that they have a girlfriend at the time. But once you find out, what the fuck do y'all do? I know if it were me, I wouldn't fuck with you no more because you know why? I wouldn't want nobody doing that shit to me. And you have to look at it like that. Would you want the shit done to you? Like, seriously, like, would you really want the shit done to you? Now, his girlfriend, she know about you. However, you say she know about you because she found your wallet in your car, in his car, and she went through it. That's what he told you. However, you think she know about you? Sweetheart, she don't know about you, know about you like that. That's what he fucking is telling you. You ain't a fly on the wall sitting there listening to his conversations with that bitch. You don't know what he really fucking told her. Why does my teeth look so yellow from this camera? This is the thing that I hate. Like, my teeth are not yellow like that. Like, oh my God. Um, but anyway, and that's so, like, makes me feel self-conscious. But... You know what I'm saying? You don't know what the fuck he's telling her. So she found your wallet. How do you really know she found your wallet? He could have just told you that just to make the situation look a little bit better. That bitch might not even have seen your wallet. She might not know nothing the fuck about you, okay? Unless she called you or came to your motherfucking door and dropped your wallet off. I doubt the bitch knows anything about you. And if she does, how do you know what she knows? He could have told her, oh, that's just one of the, the, um, the flight attendants. I gave her a ride home. She must have lost her thing. Or he could have told her... That's one of the flight attendants um, that was on the plane. She left it, so I've been holding on to it. So when I see her again, he could have told her anything. Do you really fucking think for a hot ass minute that this motherfucker told her that this is the flight attendant that I'm fucking behind your back and I'm just using you? Come on now. If the motherfucker really told her that it's a flight attendant that I'm fucking with, do you really honestly think that bitch would still be the fuck around? Come on now, unless she just as stupid as you are being, okay? I'm going to say this much. He might be dicking you down, sweetheart, but that the dick ain't all of that. Meaning, there's more dicks out there in the world that you could get with than fucking settling for that one right there. For real. So now she coming back from Texas after y'all done got back together. and But he's claiming that he don't want her to come back and all of this. But what is he to do? So basically he's crying sheep to you. Or what is that? The boy that cried wolf. That's what the fuck he's doing. He's crying wolf. Because the boy that cried wolf, what did he do? He lied. He just made up a bunch of fucking lies. And this is what this motherfucker is doing. He crying wolf to you. He telling you that he don't want her to come back. Yeah, right, bitch. Yeah, fucking right. That nigga called her to fuck back. He said nothing but sweet nothings to her and got her to, you know, bend backwards and bend over and not bend over like sexually, but bend over and go back on her words and move her ass right back to y'all city and town. Okay, so don't front and don't let him front on you and make you believe that he don't really want her to come back and that she's just deciding on her own that she's going to come back. Because, I mean, like, really, if a bitch know about another bitch, all hell is going to break loose. I know if that were me and if I was the girlfriend that's at home taking care of your kids and then I found that you have some 
you having an affair on the side, nigga, you better hope when you come home that I'm there taking care of the motherfuckers and child protection services ain't got them because I damn sure will fucking be out, all right? You ain't about to sit around and use me for your personal fucking gains of taking care of your little fucking rug rats, especially if I don't got none of my own and you out there fucking bitches too. Not about to happen. Not about to happen. But, like I said, some people want to be in a relationship so bad that they'll just lower their standards just to be in a relationship because a motherfucker is telling you nice things. I always tell y'all, the first time you meet them, it's their representative, okay? For real. It's their representative, meaning they're going to tell you some nice shit. They're going to treat you real good. They're going to tell you everything that you want to hear or they think you want to hear just so they can get in good with you and get with you and get what they need or just get in a relationship with you. Why would you blatantly just be an asshole to somebody if you're trying to get with them? However... He basically lets you see who he was by telling you that he got a girlfriend and he she live at home and she used and he uses her she takes care of his kids while he's away because he don't want to um he don't want to pay for nanny and yeah we on again off again but I'm gonna just use this bitch until I can use her for as long as I can fucking use her and that's how it is so he basically told you how he felt about her. And what type of person he was. But what did you do, Tony? You ain't do shit. You just stayed around. You stayed texting the nigga. You stayed fucking him. That's what the fuck you did. And now you want to be in your feelings. And what the fuck would I do? Sweetheart, I already told you. If it were me that had what met someone and he had a girl and I found out about it, I ain't fucking with him. However, I might call a bitch or come stop by or use drop by just to let you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Not to be spiteful and hateful, but just because as a woman, that's what I would want somebody to do for me. However, a lot of women don't believe the next woman. And that's okay. That's understandable because sometimes they could just be snakes in the ground and they just want to destroy somebody's relationship. However, there are some that are non-snakes and, you know what I'm saying, they mean well by it. You know, it's it's what you call girl code. You know, girl code. Look out for your girls. Even if that ain't your motherfucking friend, bitch, look out for her. You know, think about yourself. Would you want somebody shitting on you like that? You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, for real? Like, I'd be damned if I'm at home with the kids. And I'm going to just say this. I'm going to use this as an example. Though it's never happened, but I'm going to just say this. I'm going to just use this as an example. Okay? Just so y'all see where I'm coming from. That's like me and my husband. And, you know what I'm saying, we got our two daughters here with us, Mumsy and Nay. And, you know what I'm saying, he got some bitch on the side. Like, he got a job where he leave town. He ain't got to be a pilot. But, you know, there are other jobs that you, you, you can't work when you leave town. So, he got a bitch that, you know, he fuck with when he leave town. All right. But I'm at home taking care of the house, taking care of the kids and shit. And then I see a bitch wallet in his fucking car. First of all, me, I'm not about to let you tell me any old kind of bullshit like, oh, you know, uh, she left it in here. It's just the person I work with. It ain't nothing. Or I'm definitely not going to let you tell me that it's somebody that I'm fucking with and I know about it. Because for one, I ain't going to say I'm going to kill you, but sweetheart... What I'm going to do to you, you're going to wish you never fucking had it done to you. On top of that, I'm not about to sit around and look like no fucking sucker to nobody and allow them to use me for their own personal gains. All right? Not going to happen. Not at all. Not going to go there. But you so stuck and wrapped in this one man that is telling you sweet nothings that you're falling for the shit. Let me tell you something. They come a dime a dozen. Men come a dime a dozen. Just like women come a dime a dozen. Okay? And when you find someone that is perfect for you or is just good for you, then that's who it is. That's who you try to build with. That's who you try to be in a relationship with. That's who you try to keep in your future. You know what I'm saying? Y'all become friends. Y'all have a lot of common. Y'all just, y'all build with each other. But when you find someone that, you feel like y'all got a lot in common, <clears throat> y'all from the same city, okay, etc., etc. 
And then you find out later on that the motherfucker is a liar and a dog or a user, okay? That's when you feel like, you know something? I know I feel like, hold up. All of the shit we got in common, we might not even have the fucking common. This motherfucker could be saying and agreeing with all of the things that you say just to get in good with you, okay? Because that's what people do. You might tell him you like to make sweaters and knit sweaters. He could tell you, yeah, I like to knit as well or I like to sew. That motherfucker probably never fucking sewed a damn thing in his life. But he going to agree with you or he going to try to be on your level just because he needs something from you, okay? Bottom line. Yeah, he's telling you y'all got a lot in common. Oh, yeah, y'all got mutual friends. Maybe y'all do have that in common, but who gives a fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, seriously, just because we lived in the same motherfucking city and we the same motherfucking age and we got mutual friends in common don't mean that we got to fuck with each other like that, okay? On some real shit. On some real shit. I don't know, but, you know, me personally, like, this has happened to me, like, forever ago. Like, when I say forever ago, my daughter is 22, so this was probably, like, when she wasn't even born, you know, i never forget because this was so not me, okay? Like like I said, I don't fuck with nobody else's man, okay? That's one thing I don't do. So, i never forget. This is when I lived in Schenectady, okay? And I had a kid at the time. I don't even remember the guy's name, but I do remember the, the young lady's name. Her name was Bertha, okay? Her name was Bertha. And all I know is the guy and I have met each other outside somewhere. You know, like just in public. We seen each other or he seen me, whatever. I can't remember the whole story, but, you know, we exchanged numbers with each other. And he called me and stuff. And we know we conversed over the phone. We never, like, met each other any time after that. Like, meaning, when I say any time after that, meaning the first time I saw him was in public. And I don't even remember where it was. But that was the first and the only time I saw him, you know. T too much time didn't go by when this incident occur which I'm about to tell you so it probably was like a week or two after we had conversed on the phone that I had got a phone call you know star 69 was really popular all right and this girl calls my phone back my phone number, my house phone back you know I have no cell phone and I don't know if he had a cell phone or not I don't remember if it was a cell phone that he called me from or his home number but I know I didn't have a cell phone back then okay so the number was star 69 she called the number back and you know I answered the phone now like I said I don't remember his name so we are just gonna call him we'll call him Sean or something we'll just call him Sean cause that's the name that popped into my head so she called my phone back this girl and I'm like you know hello and she's like hi this is um who's who am I speaking with I was like excuse me you know well this is um Sean's girlfriend you know like I said I cannot remember word for word what she said and you know I found your number I know she said she found my number and she wanted to know was I messing with her man I was like no I'm not messing with him you know, I'm not messing with him. And I can't remember what I told her, but I do know that I did tell her, no, I'm not messing with your man. And, you know, basically she fell for what I told her, like, no, you know what I mean? Because after her calling me, I definitely wasn't going to, you know, bother with him again, you know, but I didn't want to just say, yes, yeah, I am messing with your man. So I said, no. Within five minutes later, I star 69 her back the number or I used the caller ID one of the two I know I had caller ID I'm not really sure if it was at that time but I know that I got right in touch with her five minutes later within five minutes later I called her back and you know I said hi this is April you know basically getting you know I already knew her name was Bertha and um, you know I said basically I told her like you know your boyfriend was calling me to try and get with me, okay? And I was telling her that he'd been calling me. I told her where we met each other at and so forth. And you know what she said to me? Wow, thank you for being a real woman and letting me know this. Because some women would not do that. And that's what I did. And you know something so crazy? I ended up meeting her, not like on purpose, you know what I'm saying? But I can't remember how I met her, but... We did meet each other in person one day because Schenectady, New York is a small town. And she thanked me and she said that that was what real women do. 
And I felt good about the shit. Not like I was being vindictive, but I felt like, you know what, I did the right thing. And that's what I was supposed to do as a woman. Because I wouldn't want anybody to do that to me on purpose. You know what I'm saying? When you do it by accident, it's one thing because you don't know. If you don't know and he's, you know, telling you all kind of things like, yeah, yeah, you know, this and this and that. I'm single. I ain't got no girl. I ain't got no wife, etc., etc. Then that's understandable. But when your ass find out about it. You are you know about it already, bitch. You dead ass wrong. Like dead ass wrong. Like why would you want to be with somebody who you know is gonna go home to the next bitch and fuck with her? Like I got better things to do with my time, and one of them is not you. Okay, for sure. That's just that's just how I feel about it. But like I said, there are women who really don't give a fuck. But when it happens to their ass. It's a problem. It's an issue. They get in their feelings about it. So, Tony, you got in your feelings about it at the airport when he was getting picked up by his girlfriend. How do you think she might feel about the situation? Like, if she does know about you, then she's stupid for fucking with him and staying around. However, if she does know about you, maybe that's the reason why she motherfucking left. And then, to lure her back into his arms and into babysitting for him again, he told her he don't fuck with you no more. I guarantee you, sweetheart. That there's no way on God's green earth that he told her that he fucks you, you his girlfriend, or any of that shit. He is not a trying to mess up anything at home. And on top of that, let's just get this straight, sweetheart, because I just thought about this. So, she found, his, she found your wallet in the car, right? So, she knows all about you. So, he says, that's what he's telling you, okay? Because I know that for a fact he's telling you this. Okay, so she found your wallet in the car, and she knows all about you, so he says, okay? Now, what makes you think that, being that she knows all about you, okay, she would be a committed girlfriend to him? She would sit around and watch his kids. There's got to be some type of level where somebody feels used. Like, as a woman, you're not going to stay around in the picture and, and do shit for this man when he's using you. Point out blank. Just blatantly using you. You're not going to sit around. I know there, women. some women are stupid, some men are stupid. I don't think that they're that fucking stupid. Okay? And then there are some that are. But what makes you think that, you know, she really fully knows about you? For all you know, he could be saying so much shit. But I guarantee you she don't know about you. You know why? Because here's the example. Whenever y'all part ways, what does he do? He deletes your text messages, okay? And on top of that, he blocked your phone number in his phone. So if she knew so much the fuck about you, why would he have to do all of that? Why would he have to delete your phone number? And why would he have to, or delete your text messages, excuse me. Why would he have to delete your text messages and block your phone number. Like, come on now. Let's be for real. If the bitch really, really knows about you and knows who you are to him, why the fuck would he be deleting your text messages to him and to you, from him to you and you to him? Why would he? Why would he be blocking your phone number or any of that? I mean, I'm saying she knows about you, so why, why go through all of those extra steps? When she already knows about you. She already knows what time it is. You know what I'm saying? She's still going to be there. She's a ride or die bitch. And she's just going to sit back and wait until he decides just to be with her. And not fuck with you no more. But she knows all about you. That bitch don't know about you like that. Okay? She Trust me when I tell you. She don't know about you like that. Because had she knew about you like that. Then that motherfucker Randall, the pilot, would not have to fucking delete your text messages. Or y'all text messages to one another. And he damn sure wouldn't have to fucking act all secretive about her coming to pick him up from the goddamn airport or any of that shit. You know what I'm saying? That's just my take on it. But back to what would I do? Sweetheart, I might blow you up. I might go to your house if I find out your address because I know the bitch lived there. And I might just confront you with her around, you know? Or I might not even do any of that. I might just go ahead and stop fucking with you in general and leave you the fuck alone. Because sometimes that's what you need to do. Just leave the person the fuck alone and carry on about your business. Another man is going to come up because, like I said, they come, what? A dime a motherfucking dozen. So, therefore, I'm pretty sure that you would eventually find one that's more your speed and it's for you versus going out there and fucking with somebody on the side. I get it. You probably get lonely because you are a flight attendant. Damn it. 
and you want some affection and love. I get that. Who don't want affection and love? But why would you do it at the cost of another woman? Like, that shit right there is straight up bullshit. Like, for real? Don't do shit to people and that you don't want done to you. On some real shit, don't do shit to people like that. And then on top of that, don't get mad and get in your feelings when you already knew the situation and you put yourself in that shit. You can't get fucking mad that the man is getting picked up by his living girlfriend slash nanny slash stepmother slash, you know what I'm saying, whatever you want to call her to him. You can't get mad at that. They live together. So now you already knew they lived together, okay? Y'all, you knew that from the jump. I don't know when he told you that, but I'm pretty sure he didn't tell you that the same day he was finished fucking you. I'm pretty sure he didn't. But he told you. Bottom line is he told you. And on top of that, he told you after the fact. And I'm going to tell you this. He's a liar because he didn't even tell you that information right away. Had he been a real man and was about his business, he would have told you right away before y'all started fucking with each other or fucking. Listen, I got a girl... We have issues in our relationships and such and such. Excuse me, what can I do for you because I'm doing a video? Okay. You know what I'm saying? He would have told you, I have a girl. We having our problems, you know, and I'm going through it right now. But if you still want to get with me, then that's your choice. If she stays at my home, she lives with me, we live together, and she takes care of my kids. Okay? That's what he would have been. That's what would have been the manly thing to do. And you could have decided from that point on whether or not you wanted to fuck with him. But he didn't do that. So therefore, that makes him to be a liar. And that ain't like no little white lie that could be just like forgotten about. Like, oh, okay, well, you, you shrunk my shirt in the laundry. It ain't no lie like that. It's more or less like a deceitful, conniving lie. And on top of that, he told you he uses women. He might not. Sorry about that, the camera cut off. This is not my regular camera, it's my vlogging camera. But he blatantly told you he uses women. I'm just using her to be a nanny to my kids because I don't want to pay for one. And she's only in my house because I don't want to pay for a nanny. So basically I'm using her to take care of my kids and, you know, be a mother to them. That's what I'm using her for. So if you ain't with the program, then you can just go ahead, you know what I'm saying, and I'll just keep her in the picture. Did you ever ask him, Tony, who was watching his fucking kids while she was going to Texas and she left him? How about this, Tony? How do you even know for a fact that she really even left? Okay? Because I'm pretty sure your black ass or whatever color you are, you weren't over at his house. I'm pretty sure he did not bring you to his home. Okay? Around his kids. I'm pretty sure he did not. Okay, so do you really know that she left and went to Texas? No, you really don't. That bitch could have been there the whole fucking time. And that was just his way of, you know, getting back in good with you. And, you know what I'm saying? Trying to win you over. And I know this for a fact because I'm going to tell you why. She probably didn't leave. Now, she watches his kids, right? While he goes to work and stuff. So, that night he came to your house because they probably got into an argument. Who knows what it was about? It might not even have been about you. It could have been about anything. Just anything in general. But he came over and he spent the night. Maybe they didn't get in an argument. Maybe he just told her some bullshit just to get out of just being in the house. He could have told her that he was going to work or whatever. You don't know this. But she's there and she watches his kids. So he came over to your house. And he never told you why he came over. But obviously it was due to an argument. Because when he went home, he told you that she packed her shit. And she left and went back to Texas. So, you mean to tell me that all of a sudden she decided to leave his kids there by themselves? Okay? And leave him? She ain't been left the kids by themselves. Why would she leave them in the middle of the night? They're not teenage kids. They're little kids. Because you are in your 20s or 30s or whatever. They're not, they're not like grown kids or teenage kids like 17 and stuff. Because he don't need nobody to watch them. Anyone that age, you know, someone to come from time to time and look in on them, maybe. So, what makes you think that that bitch really left and went somewhere? He could have told you anything. That bitch could have been sitting right there. Or he might not even have went home and told you that. He could have been in his car. He could have been anywhere telling you, oh, yeah, she left and she went back to Texas. So, she just up and left in the middle of the night after their argument, left the kids there by themselves. They didn't even bother calling their father and saying, oh, she left us here. She's gone. None of that shit. This is the investigation that I'm doing. Like, 
I'm like being serious like right now like when you have to stop and think about the shit like the grass is greener on the other side like they say but that shit sometimes is burnt the fuck out and it's nothing but a bunch of fucking weeds okay you gotta fucking weed out the shit so all of a sudden she could have left many times when she she knew about you and left them kids but this is the time when she decided to just up and leave the kids and go back to texas okay and nobody called you the kids didn't even call your cell phone i mean not his cell phone excuse me his cell phone nobody called him and told him like yeah daddy she's not here she left us by ourselves etc etc he didn't get that phone call you didn't say he got that phone call so I don't think she left. I don't think she was gone by the time he got home. Why would she do that? She, those are small kids. They're young kids. You're not going to leave them by themselves. You're going to at least wait until he comes back. You know what I mean? So, me, honestly, he's a liar. He's a cheat. And he's a dog. And he's a user. Those things right there are red flags. So what? He tells you nice things. Big fucking deal. I can tell you some nice things right now, girl. Like, you beautiful and you gorgeous. And, you know what I'm saying, you got it together because you were a flight attendant. And I could just say a whole bunch of nice things for, to you. That don't mean I want to get with you. You know what I'm saying? That don't mean you want to get with me because I'm telling you some nice things. People tell people nice things because that's what we do. As a human being, we do compliment one another. So don't feel like because he told you some nice motherfucking things that he's the one for you. You know what I'm saying? It's not even like that. He's not the one for you. He's got a girlfriend. He's got a family, okay? He's got a motherfucking family who he attends to. And he's got his girlfriend who's a living girlfriend. And for all we know, that could be his baby mama. I'm just saying. You have to look at the situation in all type of ways. That could be his baby mama for all we know. Like, I'm, I'm being serious. Like, how do you know that's not his baby mama? How do you know that that's not his wife? You don't know this. You, you really don't know this. He could be telling you anything. You don't know what's really going on over there. Okay? You don't know if that's his baby mama, that's his girlfriend, his wife. You don't know this. He's not going to tell you every fucking thing. But you're going to go for it and listen to everything. Sweetheart, wake the fuck up. All right? On some real shit, wake the fuck up. That nigga is not the one for you. You got you a side piece. Make that your whole piece. Okay? And if he's not worthy enough to be your side piece, the other dude, then that means that you just need to just go ahead, get off the market, do what you got to do for yourself, get back in the zone of things, and make time for Tony. So that way you can relive your life. You can have a fruitful life. That way you ain't got to be in your feelings about some deadbeat ass man who ain't about shit and got a girlfriend on the side. Okay? That's what the, this is what time we on right now. On some real shit. Stop fucking with everybody else's man or somebody else's man on some real shit. And I'm not just saying that to you, Tony, but I'm saying that in general. If y'all bitches find out that a nigga got a girlfriend, why would you want to still fuck with him? Like, are you that desperate? Is he the last man on earth? Like, seriously, he ain't the last man on earth. There's somebody for everybody the fuck out there. I don't give a fuck if it took you five years. You're definitely going to find somebody for you. However, but if you leave yourself and you continue in that stagnated relationship with somebody like him, you ain't never going to give nobody else a chance who's probably really, really worthy of it and deserving of it because you're so busy wrapped up in this motherfucker who ain't about shit and you trying to resolve shit with him and trying to be the main chick that you can't see through the fucking gra the, through the trees. You know what I'm saying? You can't see through the trees. All you see is smoke and whistles and the fucking Randall Kyle who's flying bitches all over the motherfucking world and probably fucking other um flight attendants and whoever the fuck else okay i'm just saying this is me being realistic like when you find out that somebody got a man girl please don't fuck with him find your own motherfucking man get in the zone and get your own shit like on some real shit find your own motherfucking man i'm just saying that's what the fuck we do i mean that's what the fuck i do so tony get out your feelings sweetheart leave him alone Find somebody that's compatible for you or find yourself for a minute. But stop fucking with him because he's not worth your time and heartache. And he damn sure ain't worth breaking up a family that could be really actually a good family. He might not even have no issues at home with her. You don't know this. You're not a fly on the wall. You don't really know this. Everything could be honky-dory at home. She could be happy with him. He, he could be happy with her. But he still want to go out and get him a side piece. You know what I'm saying? That's what men do. That's what women do when they dogs like that. That's what the fuck they do. So they could have a nice happy family. 
So don't sit around breaking up nobody's happy home. Find your own man. Stop worrying about what this nigga's telling you because of course he's going to tell you that. It wouldn't be right if he didn't tell you that. This is what the fuck they do. This is what the fuck women do too. They tell you what you want to hear because they want a piece. He's not going to tell you I got a good family at home. I love my wife to death, but I just want some pussy from you. No, sweetheart. Get your head out the motherfucking clouds, okay? That's some real shit. Y'all let Tony know how y'all feel about the situation. So we're going to move on to the next one here on. All right, you guys, so this one is a pretty good one here. Hello, I'm a seasoned fan, and I have gone back and forth about sending this letter several times. I am 30-something, married, mother of two. My son is 13 and has recently informed me that he doesn't believe in God. When I inquired why he did not feel blessed with all the things the Lord has given him, he responded, all of those things could have happened without God. Since this conversation, I have been conflicted with whether or what tactics I should use to encourage him to find his own personal spiritual relationship. His behavior is seemingly becoming more and more out of pocket, and I am the type of mother that you will not be embarrassing me in public. So I am trying to get a handle on things now before they get worse, and I really bust all those teeth out the front of his mouth. I told him he had been disrespectful to me, and because of that, I was taking his games, television, and phone. He said, how was he disrespectful? And I gave him examples, and he told me how. I'm out here giving him my absolute last and also reminded him that I gave him life. This nigga says to me, exactly, that was 13 years ago. As if to say, what have you done for me lately? This really made my blood boil. But instead of my usual tactics of getting physical with him, I walked away. Man, when dad said he hoped that I have one just like me, he gave me a double dose. April, I am a mighty 4'11 and have and have a grown and he has grown taller than me and I think that's giving him some sort of courage but he don't know my rap sheet and that hasn't ever mattered to me that's my child and I love him but I'll be damned if he ever thinks he's going to run my shit my husband is not his father and he tries to stay clear of these altercations which also pisses me up girl that's on another real talk he acts a lot like his father and I can send to live there. I can send him to live there, but I am concerned that he will not be taken care of the way my baby should. I have done everything for him since birth. Made sure he does his schoolwork, doctor appointments, dentist, you name it, everything. So it's difficult to leave his future up to, ch up to chance. And if anything ever happened, I don't know how I would deal with it. April, please help. Sincerely, mother of one of these... Sincerely, mother of one of these new niggas. Oh, shit. So we're just going to call her... Annie okay so first of all let me tell y'all something about these kids today on some real shit um this is Milani focus in um let me tell y'all about these kids today and y'all know I have said this on several videos before these motherfucking kids today act like you know what you owe them something I'm being dead ass serious when I say this like they really feel like we as parents owe them some shit like, they're entitled to it. That's how they feel. They feel like they are entitled to whatever the fuck they want. And I'm going to just mix them together. Or whatever the fuck we give them, they feel like they are entitled to the shit. And that's where the fuck it goes wrong. They, they seem like they don't have no respect for not only adults or peers or anyone, but... They damn sure don't even have respect for their own selves. Had they had respect for themselves, I guarantee you half of them would even act the way they fucking do. But you know what? That's society now. And I'm not going to say I blame it on like social media or anything like that because you know why? Social media is a trend. It's a thing that goes around. My daughter is 16 years old. She's on social media. My other daughter, she's 11. She's on social media. They don't disrespect me like that. You know what I'm saying? They don't act like that. You know what I'm saying? So I can't blame it on social media. And I can't blame it on the parent either sometimes because regardless of what they may do to 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 try and get the kid to act right and behave right and be respectful, it don't fucking work. Because that motherfucking kid is going to be the way they want to be, which is a straight up fucking little asshole, okay? So these kids today, they don't know the value of anything. And I think sometimes it has to do with, you know, just the environment or the people they are around, you know what I'm saying? Or sometimes even the things that we give them. And it also can be because of the things that they do or play like video games or just, it could also be like social media and TV as well. So, I mean, like you can't blame it on one thing, but you can like use those as examples because those also trigger like, you know, signs of behavior or the way a child acts. 
but here's the thing like i said my daughter she's 16 she ain't never been disrespectful to me ever okay and neither has my daughter mumsy okay now y'all know i have five motherfucking kids five of them all right 26 years old one is 26 my son and he has a baby and one on the way and then we have my daughter who's 22 Tati, who lives here with me, and she has my grandson, Tinky, who's three and a half, okay? Then I have my son, Wuzzle, who is 20, and he also lives here with me. Now, let me tell you, I say this to my husband all the time, and I mean this shit. I'm so happy and thankful for my last two, which are with him, and I'm thankful for all my kids. But when I say thankful, meaning their attitude towards school, towards life, towards people, towards just life in general and responsibilities. Them two, I am so blessed with them two because they have never given me any type of issues ever, okay? When I say no type of issues, like I don't get phone calls like that from school. I mean, I have gotten a couple regarding my daughter, Nay, but never on no disrespectful shit, never, okay? It may be, oh, she arrived late to school, and I know this because I brought her to school late, or she did have a fight once. She did have a fight last year, last year, and, um, girl, I don't know why kids record everything these days, but I did see the fight, and girl, my little daughter name, she really would put hands on somebody, you know, she, she sure does, but, you know, like, I don't, I don't get phone calls i don't get any type of disrespect they do as they're supposed to or as they're asked you know they don't give me no problems now then i have my one we'll just start with tati now she was always in trouble in school no matter how much i kicked her ass and got on her and went off on her she stayed being disrespectful in school you know it was like a dr jekyll and mr hyde type thing and i don't know why she would act like that but she would be like a total different person in the home and then she would go to school and she would be a totally different person as well and i caught her in the middle of the act one time at the school she didn't even know i was standing right there on the other side of the classroom door listening to everything that i was told because what happened the teachers came to my house and had me come up to the school why did they have me come why did they come to my house because tati told them and this is when i just had um mumsy tati told them that i didn't have a phone or transportation to get to the school which the school was probably like about five blocks away um, which was a blatant lie. I had a house phone and I had a work cell phone and I had my own personal cell phone and That means that I had three means of communication and I also had two cars. Okay, so I also had means of transportation So they came and got me and told me all about this and wanted me to come to the school now mind you Mumsy was just baby she probably had to be like at least two weeks old I'm standing there and she's already in a classroom for this um you know bad behavior like in school suspension or something like that so I'm standing there listening to her and she's being disrespectful to not only the students but to the teacher telling the teacher she's gonna punch her in her nose at that moment in time she has never been so fucking embarrassed in her life at school okay which meant that she stopped her bullshit now this was like in middle school i've had issues with tati since the first grade and i'm not sure why she's a really smart kid they always try to use the excuse as she's just bored because she's so smart i don't find that to be no fucking kind of excuse i embarrass the shit out of her and that's what i find that the kids hate the most when you embarrass them in front of their friends and peers take me for example i'll never forget i was in middle school you know i was smelling myself because you know when you get like a certain age i think i was like 14 or 15 you know i had a little boyfriend his name was jermaine he was a little light skin you know i guess because light skin was in back then but you know i was cutting class and stuff and my mother i guess she got tired of it because she had my music teacher i'll never forget i don't remember her name but she would communicate with my mom like god knows how often but a little bit too often for my likes okay so she would communicate with my mom and she told my mom that I was cutting. 
you know, I'm out of school. It's the end of the school day. I'm standing there talking with my friends and stuff, you know, being cute like I was. And I had this light blue, like mint green winter coat on because it was it was the winter time. There was snow on the ground. We was living in Brooklyn at the time with my mom's boyfriend and shit. So, you know, I'm standing out there trying to be cute and shit. Can you please tell me why? My mother showed up out of nowhere. Okay, while I was standing there talking to my friends, she fucking not only embarrassed me, but I might as well have just dug my own fucking grave. Seriously, she fucking kicked the shit out of me. When I say kick me, she first of all, she told me to go home and she was cussing me out in front of my friends. And you know, they, they ain't no real friends if they stand there laughing at you and ridiculing you and shit. This is what they were doing. They were laughing. They might not have been saying no names. I don't remember if they were saying anything at all. But I know they were laughing at, sh at me. And, and anyway, regardless, my mom was standing there going off of me about school and shit and cussing me out and calling me all kind of names. That, for one, is embarrassing. So even if they weren't laughing, I was already fucking embarrassed and I felt like it was the end of the world. Why, when I turn around and get the fuck away from her and go home, she fucking, this lady... She had on some snow boots. When I say snow boots, I'm talking about some snow motherfucking boots. Did she turn, I turned around, did she kick the shit out of me? And I remember I said I had on a, what? A mint green freaking um winter coat on. She kicked the shit out of me. Like literally kicked the shit out of me. To where I had her fucking boot print on the back of my fucking coat. Okay? Now mind you. I was so embarrassed. I can't remember if this was on a weekend or what, like on a Friday or what day of the week it was. But I know that the kids seen, there was a whole bunch of people out there. She embarrassed the shit out of me. And I know I had to go back to school, whatever day it was, and fucking face the fucking music with my friends and whoever else was standing out there laughing and saw the incident. I was so fucking embarrassed. I never fucking cut another class again well not that school at least you know when i got to high school it was different but i know after that moment in time man i fucking you didn't have to worry about me skipping class and all of that shit none of that shit i i did the right thing because i was so fucking embarrassed and that's one prime example another prime example is me going up to my eldest son school and high school because he always want to talk in class and be the jokester and they're constantly telling him like be quiet so they had this room in the classroom they called me in advance and told me about this room that they had like you can see through the you, you sit in one of the rooms it's inside the classroom and they can't see in the room that you're in there but you can see them so basically it's like something like a mirror but it's got a door on it you know saying like I could see what my son is doing but he don't know I'm in there spying on him so they called me up and I, I agreed like, yeah, let's do that. Let's let, I'll come up there basically and spy on him and watch him. And then come out of the classroom while he's still in class and say something which will embarrass him. Well, I never got the chance to embarrass him because they had decided to have a, um, what do you call it? A fire drill. This fire drill was only done so that I can get, you know, in the classroom. Now, it wasn't for the whole school. Everybody in the classroom was basically like, well, how come we're the only ones going out and et cetera, et cetera. Well, someone in his classroom seen me and they knew who I was and informed him ahead of time. So it never went down, but he knew I was there and he knew why I was there and he stopped his shit. This is the thing with the kids today. They don't like being fucking embarrassed, okay, because what? They lose their street creds. Somebody's recording the shit and putting it all on social media. So they ain't trying to be embarrassed. Sometimes, you know what, your words ain't even worth shit anymore. Sometimes you just got to play the game with them. They embarrassing you, bitch, you got to embarrass them motherfuckers too. Like on some real shit, please focus, Kim, please. You got to embarrass them on some real shit. Like, oh, okay, you got to keep talking, you got to keep talking, you got to keep talking. It's not even doing you no good. It's not even getting you nowhere. You got to play the game with them. Sometimes taking away their shit, that don't mean shit. 
that ain't shit to them. They know that eventually you're going to give the shit back. So you got to play the game with them and you got to fucking do the same shit that they do to you. You might have to go to the extreme, like I said, like embarrass the motherfuckers. But I guarantee you, I bet you, the motherfucker will think twice before he even try to embarrass you or be disrespectful to you. Because why? He don't want to be laughed at by his friends. That's the worst thing you could do to a kid is embarrass them in front of their friends. Trust me when I tell you, I still do the shit because I don't give a fuck. I have my son here who's 20 years old and I feel like he's lazy. He needs to do something with himself. I keep telling you, you need to go pay your fines to the court. You don't want to do that. You want to go ahead and my camera battery died, so I had to put in another one. But like I was saying, I tell my son all the time, my 20 year old, you know, you need to do something with yourself. All you want to do is work. Not even all you want to do is work, but he works at Walmart. Like, you know, saying, okay, that's cool. You don't have no responsibilities, but you need to get your shit together because I'm tired of it. You don't keep your room clean. I got to constantly tell you something for your own good. You don't pay your fines at court. I have to constantly go with you. You haven't paid them yet, but you're going out. You're buying dumb shit like sneakers or just dumb shit in general that you haven't taken care of your responsibilities but you want to go out and you know what I'm saying you want to spend money that you really don't even have like that so you know I'm constantly telling him shit and I get tired of the shit like on some real shit like I get really sick and tired of it and this is how I feel like I had to keep telling him you need to stop um, smoking weed and like I said he's only 20 so he has no business drinking okay and I had to get on him about that we had a big altercation in here um a while back because I found some liquor in my house and then I found it again so what happened I poured the whole shit out he tried to get mouthy with me and you know what the fuck I did for his ass I sent his ass to jail because you're not about to be up in my house being disrespectful to me when I take care of y'all motherfuckers and I pay for shit I sure did have the police come because you're not about to be like I said being disrespectful and trying to talk shit to me in my motherfucking shit and since you feel big Billy badass this sweetheart feel big Billy badass behind bars and so I had him arrested okay these are the things that you have to do because let me tell you something I don't understand them they know that you're crazy as a parent. Like, some parents are really crazy. Like, my kids, they know how the fuck I get down. Like, I don't give a fuck if it's in public or whatever. I will embarrass you if you try to come off at me or you get out of hand. I have embarrassed Mumsy on a few occasions. And believe it or not, Mumsy, she's not disrespectful. She's not fresh. But she'll try to correct me several times when I'm talking to Nay about something. And it's not even a correction like, oh, that, oh, I said something. I'm like... You know, I spelled something wrong or whatever. I'll be talking to Nay. Like, recently, I was talking to Nay. And we was in the store. And I was like, oh, this is cute. This is real cute. Now, mind you, Mumsy had already fucking irritated me at the mall already because she wanted something and I wasn't buying it because every time we go somewhere I'm getting her something okay I, I'll get something for her for all my kids not just her but she was irritating me with that and then when she just turned around and was like it's not cute it's cute man I went off on the, in the mall I didn't scream at the top of my lungs but the people that were walking by they surely did hear me even the little fucking security guard he stood there and looked at me and watched like you know what I'm saying I had to let him know either you can kill ahead and keep walking or you'll be the next one for real. What did he do? He carried on his happy little ass away. Because I'm talking to her. But when I'm finished, I can fix you too. I don't give a fuck where we at. If you are embarrassing me or being disrespectful to me and you one of my kids, honey, I'm going to embarrass you to the utmost. Okay? To where you're going to know for the next motherfucking time, don't try to play me. Ever. In public or anywhere the fuck else. Don't be disrespectful to me at all. I have put my son out who's 20 years old. I have put him out because I'm not about to be irritated. You don't want to clean up your motherfucking room or you don't want to do anything in here. Then you know what? Get the fuck out. And I have kicked him out. I don't give a fuck if you ain't got nowhere to sleep. You you must have somewhere to sleep because any other time you want to hang out with your friends and shit. So where are your friends at now? The ones that you always choose over your family. The ones who you'll do shit for first. Where they at now when you homeless, okay? Where the fuck they at now? Let me tell you something about this new generation, okay? These new motherfucking generation kids are nothing but fucking lazy. Not all of them, but a lot of them are lazy and disrespectful. And it's sad because these are the ones, like I said, are going to be the ones who are going to basically run the country, okay? These little motherfuckers who don't even know what a dictionary or a thesaurus is, okay? This is what me and my husband talk about because, like I said, 
all they do in school now is to have them use the computers. They don't tell them nothing about you no know, black history, no no world history, no nothing. They just think that they can find all the answers on fucking the internet. And here is where the problem lies. I get it. The internet is popular, and yes, use it. You can use it, but also realize that. The internet was not the first thing invented to where we needed to find out information or how to get around. We had to learn that shit on our own. We had to read books. We had to read maps. We had to read how to plant shit. We had to do shit. Now, what happens? What's going to happen if we have, like, a fucking apocalypse or a zombie apocalypse where there ain't nobody left in the world but a few people, you know what I'm saying? And we have to fend for ourselves. That means there's no fucking internet, okay? What's the kids going to do today? They're going to be like, well, how do we... How do we plant crops and shit? I don't know. Let's Google it. Oh, we ain't got no internet. So you're going to starve yourselves to death? Okay. And half of them don't even know how to go to the library and look up a book through the catalog thing. They don't even know how to find those. Okay. Half of them don't even know how to do that. All they know how to do is to go on Google and Google the shit or social media or YouTube and look the shit up. They don't know how to do it the real way. What's going to happen if the, if the internet crashes? Fuck if the world comes to an end, what's going to happen if the internet crashes and we don't get no more internet? What's y'all going to do? What's the kids going to do today? They're going to just sit there and just fucking be fucked up. They'll be fucked up. And it's sad because with this day and age, you need to teach kids other shit besides getting on the computer, getting on the phone, getting on the games. They need to learn other shit. That's in my opinion, they need to learn other shit because nothing the fuck is guaranteed. When I say nothing is guaranteed, meaning... You don't know if the internet, or social media, Google, or any of that shit that you rely on on a daily basis is going to be there tomorrow. I'd be damned if I get stuck out in a zombie apocalypse or any type of world ending and I starve to death because I didn't know how to fucking look up and learn how to do certain things without the internet. They're like, yeah, I use the internet, but I also do have a dictionary and a thesaurus and I wish I had some fucking encyclopedias because if I did trust me my kids would be reading those that's the problem with the kids today they so in tune with shit that don't even fucking involve them that they start acting like those people on tv or their favorite role models goals goals Beyonce is goals like what's how is Beyonce goals because bitch I'm pretty sure she had to use a motherfucking dictionary and an encyclopedia and fucking look up shit the old way okay she wasn't always blessed with the fucking internet and google and all of that shit she had to do shit the old ways but these kids see all of these people that making money or videos or whatever it is and they feel like that's goals and this is how they act and this is how they gonna be i'm telling you me personally i wouldn't be putting up with that shit i'm not putting up with nobody's shit okay i feel like this this is my house i pay to live here i pay for everything you know what i'm saying yes i do charge my kids rent my two old eldest ones because they got jobs you 22 you 20 y'all got jobs you're not about to sit up in my house and work and then spend your money on whatever and have me busting my ass and paying for shit and i don't do shit that's not how it works in the real world because i'm teaching responsibility some people be like oh you shouldn't charge your kids rent so you mean to tell me that i'm going to allow this grown-ass mother Motherfucker, live up in my house rent free eat my shit up use my light bill use my water bill my gas bill and whatever else bill and not charge them but i'm supposed to sit here and work like a motherfucking slave and do shit all day every day for these motherfuckers you crazy and then when they and then when they go out in the real world and it's time for them to do what they supposed to motherfucking do they don't even know how to do half the shit because i didn't teach them responsibility listen let me tell you something responsibility starts at home and this is where you teach them you have to teach them once they are little babies and and they could walk. The responsibility of you is to not touch this. Because that's what you have to give kids. Responsibilities. That's a responsibility. Don't touch the shit. Okay? I don't care if it looks cute. Don't touch it. But that's the problem with a lot of these kids today. They have no responsibility. They have no respect for themselves. Let alone if you don't have respect for yourself. Why would you have respect for your peers? Or your fucking full grown parents? Or your motherfucking adults in the street in general? If you don't have respect for yourselves, you're definitely not going to have respect for nobody else. And they do feel like they can talk to you any old type of way. And they do feel like because they got some height on them that they can talk to you any old type of way or treat you any old type of way. Same shit happened to me when my son was 15, my oldest son. He's taller than me. He was feeling himself. I was told that, you know what, boys go through some type of hormonal change when they're around that age where some of them become kind of like psychotic 
crazy, disrespectful, or just in general weird. And I never believed that because I thought my son was going through some things. Like, he became real disrespectful to me. Then he started telling me, like, weird shit. And, you know, I had him evaluated. And this is where I hear this shit at, you know what I'm saying, from the doctors, like, you know. And so, I'm like, okay, well, if that's what it is, then that's what it is. But I don't give a damn if that's what it is. You're not about to be up in here. I don't give a fuck if you are going through some hormonal changes. Nigga, you better straighten your more fucking hormones right the fuck out, okay? But he's at that age where he's he's smelling himself. He probably got some little girlfriend liking him or he's liking some girl at school. And you know what? A lot of times they think that it's cool to be disrespectful and to show off and shit like that. But you have to put them in a place. Like, straight up, you have to put them in a place. I guarantee you, go up to that school and fucking embarrass his little fucking punk ass. I bet you he'll never fucking think twice about the shit. Me, personally, if you come up there and disres um, and embarrass me in front of my friends like I have been embarrassed... I won't fucking think twice about disrespecting you ever the fuck again. Or if you disrespected me in public, trust me when I tell you I'm definitely not going to fucking do this shit again because I'm going to be embarrassed. Nah. You have to put them in your place. And it's unfortunate that your husband, that's not his father, but that's his stepfather, doesn't say anything about it to him because it kind of makes the situation not like the worst, but it kind of makes the situation like a little bit harder for you to deal with because you got this grown ass man who's sitting there and just not doing anything about it and then you got his father who's really not in the picture because you're scared to send him away to live with his father because you're feeling like his life won't be of value let me tell you you might feel that way but it might not even be that way okay it might be a maybe a better environment for him because he has this man figure in his life who can teach him stuff and who will step in and say shit as long as your husband is there and he's not saying anything then it kind of makes it seem like it's okay for your son to get out of line and be disrespectful and you know what i'm saying and talk shit and just taking away shit from them sometimes is not always the answer because they can go to school and they can get on a computer or they can use their friends shit and you know what I'm saying shit like that so you know yeah you want to take their shit away but they know in the end you're going to give it back to them so it's like okay she's going to take it away for like a week or two and then she's going to give it right back so you know i'm gonna just i'm gonna show good behavior for like for that week or two and once she give it back i'm gonna go back to my old ways i'm gonna go back to my old fucking self this is what the fuck they think okay because this is what's really happening you are taking something away temporarily and then you're giving it right the fuck back to them let me tell you something i wouldn't give shit the fuck back all right i don't give a damn if you ain't got no game i don't give a fuck if you ain't got no phone or television you won't get shit the fuck back for a whole turnaround nigga you better act right and i just wouldn't give you shit the fuck back you have to really earn your keep not just behave but you have to really earn your keep but the number one thing is i will bear i will embarrass your motherfucking punk ass as soon as the first opportunity that i get sweetheart you ain't got to put hands on him because that ain't shit he might strike you back. You never know with these kids these days. And then you might have to fucking lay his little ass out. And then here it is. You getting in trouble for something that you could have avoided. Trust me when I tell you. Embarrass his little fucking ass. Embarrass him. They don't like that shit. He might get mad and walk off. But you know what? You got embarrassed. And I bet you for next motherfucking time, you'll know better. You'll know not to fuck with me. You'll know not to fucking try to play me in, in, in public, at home, or anywhere the fuck else and embarrass me. Because I got your ass. I got you. It's sad that you got to take it to that point with the kids these days. But you know what? Like I said, they ain't got no respect for nobody. They ain't even got respect for themselves. So once you have no respect for yourself, then you ain't got no respect for anybody else. And why the fuck would you? Like, why would you respect other people if you don't even respect yourself? That's common sense. You know what I'm saying? It's common sense. I, I embarrass kids. And I might be embarrassing myself while I'm embarrassing you. By making a scene or whatever or having people look at me. I don't even give a fuck at that point in time. You know what I'm saying? I don't even care about it at that point in time. Because you have pushed me to the limit to where you have embarrassed me. And have been so disrespectful to me. To where now I got to show who the fuck I really am. I got to show my true colors. So this is where I'm saying to you guys. Sometimes you got to go a little bit out of the character box. Your character box. And, and set the record straight. Like listen. Okay keep fucking with me. I say that shit to my 20 year old son all the time. All the motherfucking time. And he got one coming to him. I'm not about to be keep going back and forth with you verbally and telling you something for your own good. You don't want to listen to me. You don't want to respect me. You don't want to do what I say. Okay, watch. You're going to need me real good one day. And you know what's going to happen? I'm going to be like, oh, you remember this day? Or I'm going to just be like, nah, I can't help you. I already told you. I'm done helping you. 
You have to set the record straight. You have to put them in their own shoes and place. Trust me when I tell you. You keep giving them and giving them, they're going to still keep fucking taking and taking and they're going to feel like they're entitled to the shit. I'm done with that shit. Yours is only 13. Mine is 20. I love him to death, but you know what? I'm not about to be irritated by nobody. Not even my grandkids. I put my little three-year-old grandson in his place because, listen, I'm over it and done with those days. I'm not about to be irritated by nobody else's motherfucking kids. That goes to stay with my other grandson who's five. He's a little badass. You know what I'm saying? Every time I go there, he's always running his mouth off to me. He called me a bozo one time. Man, I had to light his little ass up, tell him about himself. My husband's like, no, babe, don't say fuck that. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. You're not going to disrespect me. That's one thing you're not going to do. I don't give a fuck if you don't see me every day or how often. You're not going to disrespect me because I'm for one your grandmother and for two I'm your elder. And you're not about to disrespect me. Boy, I will fucking rip your tongue out and wrap it around your motherfucking throat if I have to. Straight up. You have to let them have it. I don't give a fuck. I have no age limit when it comes to respect. No age limit. 90, 1, 9, 10, whatever. You disrespect me, you're going to learn about it. You're going to hear about it. You're going to definitely learn about it. So put him in his place. Like straight up put him in his place. Maybe you should send him to his father's house and see how that works out. You know what I'm saying? But I will tell you this. Embarrass his little fucking ass. I bet you he'll fucking straighten right the fuck up. And if he's acting up at school, bitch, definitely embarrass his motherfucking ass. Straight up. What would y'all do if it was y'all kid? Okay? So on that note, you guys, I love you. Stay deep and delicious. I'm about to go. I got to get a few things before I go to New York. I definitely got to do this wig video review. That's why my hair is up in cornrows. I feel like Queen Latifah from Set It Off right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that because I want to wear this wig. It's another kinky straight unit and it's long, but I decided to dye it this time. I did it red because I didn't want to have, like, the same color in another wig. You know what I'm saying? Like the same type of texture, but a different wig. So I decided to do something different with it. So yes, you guys, make sure you stay tuned for that or whatever other videos. Make sure you watch Thursday's video because it's going to be a really cheap wig. Like $12, you guys. $12, y'all. So make sure you guys watch that. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, share this video with everybody you know. And I love you guys. And I will see you in a soon to come video. You guys know I'm in New York now by the time y'all watching this. So y'all about to have a good time i cannot wait to sunday when i go see my husband okay because i'm in new york city and they live upstate so mm, our girl is going to be so relaxed and i can't wait to see my mom though tuesday i'm mean, excuse, excuse me wednesday today when y'all see this i cannot wait to see her i miss her so much she is my bestie and my heart so i am really excited to see her as well but yes i love you guys and i will see you in a soon to come video